Hi, today we're going to be learning about numeric patterns focusing on tables. Patterns can be represented in tables like in this example over here. The way this table works is that we've got all the bottom numbers in the table are our terms and the top numbers in the table are the term numbers. They tell us the position of the terms in the, in the sequence. So the first term is 5, the second term is 10, the third term is 15, the fourth term is 20. When you have a table and you're representing a sequence in a table, then you're able to put non-consecutive terms next to each other in the table and you can leave out terms in between. So like over here, you've got the fourth term and you've got the tenth term and the fifth to ninth terms have been left out in between. Okay, then over here, the last term in my table is also showing the rule for the table. It's the nth term. Okay, so this could be, we would normally have written this as tn equals 5n. So you can see tn over here is 5n when the term number is n. So we can put any value in for n and then that will help us to work out what our term for that term number is. But normally you would have to work out what the term, what the rule is. In this particular example, I've given you the rule just to show you how it can be shown on a table. Okay, so let's have a look at the first example that we're going to be doing today. So in this example, you've been given a table and you have to work out what the missing values are for blocks labeled A to C. Okay, so in this table, I've got term 1 is 9, term 2 is 12, term 3 is 15, term 4 is 18. And we have to work out what term 10 is, what which term is equal to 81 and we have to work out the nth term or the rule over there okay so that is labeled a so we're going to be doing that one first okay so for a we are going to be working out the rule for this pattern okay so in this pattern i have got Term 1 is 9, term 2 is 12, term 3 is 15, and term 4 is 18. So just like we were doing when we were writing them in sequence, we're going to just write those down and then see what the pattern is that's happening, if there's a common difference or anything like that. Okay, so let's check over here for a constant difference. So to go from 9 to 12, I can plus 3. From 12 to 15, I can plus 3. And from 15 to 18, I can plus 3. So that is telling me that I've got a constant difference of positive 3. So my rule is going to be Tn equals 3n. I take that constant difference and I multiply that by n. So it's 3n. And then I need to see what must I do to get to 9. Because if I just had 3n, my pattern would be 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, I'll just be counting in threes. But I don't have 3, 6, 9, 12. I've got 9, 12, 15, 18. So I need to know how do I get from 3, 6, 9, 12 to 9, 12, 15, 18. So what I need to do is I need to take the 3 and see what must I do to go from 3 to 9. And that is I need to plus 6. And then that is what I'm going to have on the end of my rule over here. So Tn is 3n plus 6. So for question A, the value that I would fill into this table is 3n plus 6. Okay, so that is what we have for our nth term is 3n plus 6. Now let's go and find our um, our tenth term for B. So now that we know what the nth term is, we can use that rule to help us to work out the tenth term for question B. So for question B, I'm going to work out T10. That is 3 times 10 plus 6. Remember, we when we once we know the rule, we can substitute in an n value, and then we're going to work out what it's equal to. Okay, so 3 times 10 is 30 plus 6 gives me 36. So this value in my table is 36. And then the last one we need to do is we need to work out C, which is we need to know where in the pattern what term number will give us 81. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this one 
is I need to put 81 over here and make that equal to 3n plus 6. Now I need to work out what n value will give me 81 in this rule, okay? So 3 times something plus 6 must give me 81. Okay, so if I take the 6 off and I say, well, what was 81 before I added 6? Before I added 6, I would have had 75. So 3 times something must give me 75. So 3 times 25 will give me 75. That means that n must be equal to 25. Okay, so that is what I'm going to have for C in this table over here. Okay, so when we've got a pattern that's been represented in the form of a table like this, we can use the same methods that we were using when we were doing patterns in sequences. We can write the pattern out as a sequence to be able to work out what our uh, rule is. And once we know our rule, we can just use the rule to then work out other terms in the pattern or to work out where a term is in the pattern, the position of a term in the pattern. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple of these for yourself. So the first one you're going to do, you've got this table over here where we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, and then an unknown, and then n. Okay, and then in our tn row, we've got 3, 7, 11, 15, then blank, and 99, and blank. So you need to fill in these blank blocks over here. So first, I recommend finding the nth term. Okay, so finding out what is the rule for this pattern and then using that to help you to work out the 15th term and to work out which term in the pattern is equal to 99. Okay, and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that table. So we've got in our pattern 3, 7, 11, 15. So you should have found that there is a common or constant difference of 4. So you should have found that this was 4n. And then to get from 4 to 3, because if it was just 4n, my pattern would have been 4, 8, 12, 16. So these are all one less than those numbers in that pattern. 3, 7, 11, 15, I need to then have minus 1. So 4n minus 1 is what you should have got for your nth term in your pattern or the rule for your pattern. Then using that to work out the 15th term, we need to do this. So we've got 4n minus 1. Now we're going to find the 15th term. To do that, we're going to have 4 times 15 
minus 1. So that gives us 60 minus 1, which is 59. So for that term, you should have got 59. And then for the other block that we have to fill in, we have to work out which term is equal to 99. So 99 equals 4n minus 1. And now we're going to work out, before I subtracted 1, what would this have been? It would have been 100. So 4 times what is 100? So 4 times uh, 25 is 100. So n must be 25. So for these two blocks in your table over here, you should have got 59 and 25. Okay, next one. So in this one, we have got negative 2, negative 8, negative 14, negative 20. Then you have to find the 12th term. You find out which term is equal to negative 56. And you have to find the nth term. So again, I recommend finding the nth term first. I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on this table. Okay, so let's go through that table and see what you got. So first of all, we had negative 2, negative 8, negative 14, negative 20. So you should have found that this was decreasing by 6 all the time. So we have a negative 6n in our rule like that. Then to go from negative 6 to negative 2, I have to add 4. So that's what your rule should have been. Your nth term should be negative 6n plus 4. Now we need to work out what the 12th term is. Okay, so for our 12th term, we've got t12 is negative 6 times 12 plus 4. So negative 6 times 12 is negative 72 plus 4 gives us negative 68. So you should have got for that one, negative 68. Then for the second block over here that we have to work out, we have to find out which term is equal to negative 56. So negative 56 is equal to negative 6n plus 4. Now we have to work out what n value would give us um, negative 56 with this rule. So first, Negative 6 times what plus 4 gives me negative 56. So let's just think, before I added 4, what would this have been? Okay, so that means that this we need to know what is 4 less than this. So 4 less than negative 56 is negative 60. So before I added the 4, this would have been negative 60. So I want to know 
what do I have to multiply negative 6 by to get negative 60? I need to multiply negative 6 by 10 to get negative 60, which means that n must be 10. So n is equal to 10. So in my table over here, I would have for my 12th term, it's equal to negative 68. And for this term over here, it must be the 10th term that would give me negative 56. Okay, third one. Now we've got a table that has 8, 13, 18, 23, and we need to work out the 20th term. We need to work out which term is equal to 128, and we need to work out the nth term. Again, I recommend finding the nth term first. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on this one. Right, so let's go through this table and see what you got. So first of all, for our rule, if you look at the terms in this pattern, we've got 8, 13, 18, 23. So that is increasing by 5 every time. So we've got 5n first in our pattern. Then how do we get from 5 to 8? We need to add 3. So it's 5n plus 3. So that's what my rule is for this pattern. So now we need to use that rule to work out the 20th term and to work out which term is equal to 128. So first of all, let's work out the 20th term. Okay, so in my rule 5n plus 3, I'm now going to make the n 20 because I want to work out the 20th term. Okay. So first, 5 times 20 is 100, plus 3 gives me 103. So for my 20th term, you should have got 103. Then for 128, for the term that is equal to 128, we need to find out where in the pattern this is. What is the pattern or what is the term number uh, for that term in the pattern? So first, we've got 128. That is what the term is equal to, equals 5n plus 3, we need to work out what n is. So first, I need to know what can I multiply by 5 and then add 3 to get 128. Before I try and work that out, let's just get rid of this 3 and see what would 128 have been before I added the 3. It would have been 125. So I need to know 5 times what will give me 125. 5 times 25 will give me 125. So that means that n must be equal to 25. So in other words, it's the 25th term. So when I go and put this on my table over here, the 20th term was 103. And the 25th term is equal to 128. OK, 
Okay, so that's what you should have got for the uh, table C. Now, the next table, this one is more tricky. Okay, it's not going to be quite the same as the ones that we had in the last three tables. So I'm going to give you a little bit of extra time to try and work this one out. You've got a pattern that goes 1, 8, 27, 64. See if you can re recognize those numbers that you have in this pattern. Okay, and then we have to work out which or what is the 10th term. We have to work out which term in the pattern is equal to 125. And we have to work out what the nth term is or the rule. So I recommend, as always, to work out the rule first if you can. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes for this one to try and complete this table. Okay, so let's see what you got for this one and let's see if you managed to figure it out. So first, let's have a look at our pattern. What is happening over here? So we're going from 1 to 8 to 27 to 64. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and let's just examine this pattern. So we've got 1, 8, 27, 64. And this was term 1, term 2, term 3 and term 4. Okay, now you may have recognized these numbers, and if you did, that's great. If you didn't, we're going to get to that still. So first of all, let's see, like we always do, if there is a common or a constant difference over here. So from 1 to 8, I'm adding 7. 8 to 27, I am adding 19. From 27 to 64, I'm adding 37. Okay, so that is definitely not a constant difference. Now, when we were doing 
an example in the last lesson where we didn't have a constant difference. We found that if we went to the second level, we, we did have a constant difference. But in this case, I'm not going to have on a second level a constant difference either. If I go 7 to 19, then this is adding 12. If I go from 19 to 37, this is adding 16. Okay. So again, I don't have a constant difference there either. Now, if you've been given more of this pattern, you would have been able to see a constant difference on the third level, but that hasn't happened. But what you need to do in this pattern is you need to look and see. So what is happening from here to here, from here to here, from here to here? Is there something that we can pin down and see what is going on? Okay, to get from one to one, what I can do is I can multiply by one, okay? Um, to get from 2 to 8, I can multiply by 4. To get from 3 to 9, I can multiply by 9. Or 3 to 27, I can multiply by 9. To get from 4 to 64, I can multiply by 16. But now what you might notice is with all of these multiplications that I can do, here I can times by 1. Here I can times by 4. Here I can times by 9 and here I can times by 16 okay now you might notice that all of these are the square values of the term number so this is the same as 2 squared this is the same as 3 squared this is the same as 4 squared so what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this is also 1 squared what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the term number by itself squared in other words I'm multiplying 1 by 1 by 1. I'm multiplying 2 by 2 by 2. So this is actually 2 cubed. This is 3 cubed. And this is 4 cubed. So you might have recognized these as our cube numbers, our perfect cubes. Okay, so our rule for this one is Tn equals n, which is the term number, cubed. Okay, so that is what our rule is for this one. So in... The table over here, you should get n cubed. Okay, so now we need to go and use that to work out what the tenth term is and what which term is equal to 125. Okay, so first the tenth term. So t10 is equal to 10 cubed. Okay, so 10 cubed we know is 1,000. Okay, so we know then that t10 or the 10th term is 1,000. Okay, I also need to work out which term is 125. So 125 is something cubed. So what can I cube to get 125? Now we have learned about how to do the opposite of cubing and that is to cube root. So if I want to know what was cubed, to get 125, I can take 125 and I can cube root it to get back to what was cubed. So the cube root of 125 is 5. So that means that n must be 5 because 5 cubed will give me 125. So the fifth term is 125. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So our tenth term is 1000 and our fifth term is 125. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that one. That was quite a tricky one, having our n cubed in that um, rule over there. Now, the last one that we're going to do is this one over here. Now, again, this is a completely different kind of pattern. You're going to have to think really outside the box for this one. Try and figure out what is going on in this pattern and see if you can find some kind of link, some kind of... Um, rule that is consistent for all of the different terms that you've got in the table over here. So I'm going to give you three minutes again to try and figure this one out.
Okay, so let's have a look at this one and see if you manage to figure this one out. Like I said, this is a very, very different pattern over here. It is not the same kind of pattern that we've had that has a constant difference. It doesn't have n squared. It doesn't have n cubed. We've also done one yesterday or in the last lesson that was 2 to the power of n. It's not like that either. So let's just have a look at what is actually going on in this pattern. Okay, so first of all, our first term is 24, our second term is 12, our third term is 8, our fourth term is 6. We have to work out what the 12th term is, and we have to work out which term is equal to 3, and we have to work out the nth term. Okay, so first of all, let's just see what is actually going on over here. Because if you look at it, you find that there's no constant difference. If I go from 12 to 24, or from 24 to 12, I'm subtracting 12. Then we'll go from 12 to 8, I'm subtracting 4. If I go from 8 to 6, I'm subtracting 2. From 6 to something we don't, well, obviously that's from 4 to 12 anyway, so that doesn't matter. But So there's no constant difference. And to go from 1 to 24, to see if I can find a relationship between my n value and my tn value. If I try and go from 1 to 24, I can either multiply by 24 or I can add 23. Over here, I can multiply by 6 or I can add 10. So th there's no constant, there's no commonality there. Okay. We need to look at this in a completely different way because the methods we've had for all of the other ones are not going to work in this one because our input, which is our n value, and our output, which is our term number, are related in a different way to any others that we've done. And that is that they are actually factor pairs all of the same number. If I take the 1 and the 24 and I multiply them together, let's see what we get. Okay, if I take these and I multiply them together, let's see what we get. Okay, if I take these ones and I multiply them together, we get also 24. These ones multiplied together gives me 24. So what's happening over here is all of these, my term number and my term are factor pairs. In other words, if I want to know what this is, I'm going to divide 24 by my term number, and that will give me this value. So my rule for Tn for this one is going to be 24 divided by whatever the term number is, divided by n. So if I take 24 and I divide it by 1, I will get 24. If I take 24 and I divide it by 2, I will get 12. If I take 24 and I divide it by 3, I will get 8. If I take 24 and I divide it by 4, I will get 6. So this is a completely different kind of pattern over here. Okay, so over here, for my 12th term, T12 is equal to 24 divided by 12, that gives us 2. So this is going to be 2 over there. To find out which term is equal to 3, I need to see 3 equals 24 divided by n. So 24 divided by what will give me 3? Okay, now remember we said that these are factor pairs. So 3 times something must give me 24. 3 times 8, or 24 divided by 8, gives me 3. So n must be 8. So that must be 8 over here, and this is 24 divided by 3. So we can go and fill that in on our table over there. So that was a very, very tricky one. If you did get that, well done. If you didn't, now you know. This is the kind of pattern that you can come across. So we have 24 divided by n as our rule, okay? Then over here, it was 12 and 2. So the 12th term was equal to 2. And over here, I had the 8th term 
was equal to 3. Okay, and that is how we work with numeric patterns in tables. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.